so fertilization it happens just take a look at figure e and f this is the portion the part where it shows fertilization now in uh, netum fertilization is siphonogamous meaning that the pollen tube it will act as a carrier of the male gametes okay the pollen grains as you can see here in this figure now you know when we study the development of male gametophyte you have seen how the pollen tube forms and it will carry these male gametes so this type of fertilization is referred to as siphonogamous now the pollen tube it grow towards the female gametophyte and finally pierces it as you can see in figure e okay the pollen tube with two male gametes inside and the tube nucleus it will pierce through the towards the female gametophyte and more than one pollen tubes carrying these male gametes may enter into the female gametophyte as you can see clearly in this figure e two pollen tubes here two pollen tube nucleus they are trying to enter into the female gametophyte piercing through the cells of the female gametophyte and since there are no archegonia in case of netum the egg cells they remain freely suspended in the upper free nuclear portion of the gametophyte so unlike cycas and pinus where we have studied that the female gametophyte it has the archegonia where the egg nucleus will lie but in this case there is no archegonia just remember girls that main difference okay so don't get confused in netum there are no archegonia so the egg nucleus they remain freely suspended in the nuclear portion of the gametophyte in the upper portion not the lower portion of course you can see here two eggs on the upper portion of the gametophyte and if the apex of the pollen tube it happens to come near the egg okay its wall it will ruptures and the male gametes are released and usually one male gamete it fuses with the egg but sometimes what happen since there are two eggs as in this case more than when one egg may get fertilized and will form a zygote okay and will produce a zygote so that it usually happens in case of netum but only sometimes most of the time as we know that only single male gamete will fuse with a single female uh, gamete and after fertilization the complete female gametophyte it will become cellular and it will get converted into endosperm and some of the cells of the endosperm they remain as i had already mentioned they remain uninucleate while others they become multinucleate and these multinucleate suppose some of the cells they are multinucleate having two to three nuclei these nuclei they will fuse together to form polyploid cells okay and this process is referred to as gradient ploidy so just remember when more when these nuclei of the endosperm they fuse together to form polyploid cells this process is referred to as uh, gradient ploidy so girls i will continue with the development of the embryo now since the male and the female gametophyte they are fused together in a fertilization during fertilization so which leads to the development of the zygote as you can see here in figure f that a zygote which is present in the endosperm now we will study how this zygote it will develop to form the embryo and finally the seed so the development of the embryo the single zygote here as you can see in figure a the diploid zygote is considered as the first cell of sporophytic generation why sporophytic generation because it is this embryo which will lead to the development of the plan itself of either the male plan or the female plan so that is why it's considered as the first cell of sporophytic generation now this zygote it germinates and it will it develops 
embryo inside the ovule itself. Okay, there is a great variation in the germination of zygote in different species of netum. That means from one species to another species, the the germination of zygote, the formation of the embryo is different from one species of netum to the other. So uh, let us study, let us uh, take a look at the uh, development. The zygote first, what it will happen to the zygote, it will swell and it divides by free nuclear divisions. Okay, as you can see, it becomes swell and it will divide. Now, after dividing, it will en become enlarged in size and it will also divide to form two cell two cell pro embryo so from figure a to figure d as you can see how the zygote it enlarges in size and it finally divides to give rise to two cells all right to two cell pro embryo now this two cell pro embryo the upper cell it functions as a suspensor okay the upper cell here it functions as a suspensor and the lower it becomes the embryonal cell the zygote it develop one or more tubular protuberants okay you can see here in the figure c it becomes it develop these protuberance usually towards the endosperm end towards the chalazal end that means towards the chalazal end the one it will carry the zygote nucleus okay the one which carry the zygote nucleus it survive whereas the other will degenerate so you can see in figure d these protuberance okay the first the one which carries the zygote it will survive and the other will degenerate later on a septa will appear in the tube okay a septa meaning it's like a separation uh, this septation will appear in the tube as you can see in the figure e the formation of the septation and this later and this it will become multicellular branched structure okay multicellular branched structure soon it will develop a primary suspensor tube which organizes the embryo cells at its tip okay so you can see from figure d how the primary suspensor with the formation of septa or septation Okay, it becomes multicellular and it gets organized the embryo cell at its tip. Just take a look at figure H and I. Finally, a figure I, you can see at the tip of this suspensor, we have the embryonal cells. So, this uh, formation of the embryonal cells at the tip, it depends, okay, from one uh, netum species to other species where in some cases the zygote it divides into two cells only and each cell will form a primary will form a separate primary suspensor tube unlike in this case where we can see a single primary suspensor and in some other cases or in some other species of netum this zygote will divide and give rise to multicellular structure for example in case of netum ula so we can see for the difference in the uh, development of the zygote from species to species but in most of the cases in most of the netum species the usually this terminal part of the suspensor tube it forms the embryonal mass as you can see here in figure i also known as the pro embryo and a few cells of this pro embryo lying towards the primary suspensor it will start to elongate to develop the secondary suspensor you can see in figure j and k how from the primary suspensor the cells they start to form the secondary suspensors and the cell lying towards the terminal end 
of this embryonal mass or this secondary or this uh, pro embryo okay they will form the embryo proper so just remember that few cells of this embryonal mass they will form the secondary suspensor while the cell the cells which lie towards the end the terminal end they will form the embryo proper and in case of netum ula the nucleus of the suspensor it divides to form two unequal nuclei where the smaller one it gets surrounded by wall and forms a peculiar cell but the this peculiar cell it will again give rise to the embryo proper so you can see the difference between the different netum species okay there is a, a very much difference in the development of the uh, embryo the development of the zygote to form the embryo now what happened finally this embryo it gets differentiated into distinct radical the plumule and two cotyledons okay which are similar but the cot the cotyledons of netum they are similar to that of the angiosperms and the plumule as you can see here in this figure they lie at the apex in between the two cotyledons and the radical it lie towards the opposite side of the embryo so the embryo of netum is characterized by the formation of the lateral hum or feather from the hypocotyledonary region <coughs> As you can see here in figure and this feather okay it is referred to as a feather the feather here is internally differentiated into epidermis cortex and vascular bundles and the pith so if you take a look at the TS section of the feeder inside internally there is a presence of these different layers the epidermis cortex vascular bundles and the pith so the polyembryony in the ovules of netum ula and netum nemen has been reported by many workers but however only one embryo it attained maturity and the rest will degenerate okay so as in the case of many other uh, gymnosperm plan as we can see that finally only usually only a single embryo will attain maturity and always it happens that the rest of the embryo they will be they will degenerate